I'm really excited to be here, um, part of the Manhattan Beach community, and um, to, to be here as part of the inaugural TEDx uh, conference. It's very exciting. Um, my name is Michael Shore, and I am um, Vice President of Worldwide Consumer Insights for Mattel Toys. It's a mouthful. Um, what does that mean? That means that I spend my time exploring, let me give you the official definition, exploring the uh, children's attitudes and preferences around play around the world using a variety of methodologies to provide insights, guide refined product development, and evaluate product performance and business strategies. Okay, so if I lost you somewhere with that methodologies thing, um, basically I'm, I'm like Tom Hanks and Big. Okay, I get to, uh, um, I've got a pretty good job and I get to spend most of my time, as you would assume, um, watching children play, talking to kids about play, talking to parents about play. And um, it's really great. You, you learn a lot of things. And what I thought I'd talk about today is, um, and it started with uh, something that happened a few years back. Um, we were doing um, some research on, on Hot Wheel tracks. And we were trying to, um, we had a couple different couple different uh, sets, and they had different components, and we're talking to kids, trying to find out, okay, which one of these do you like better? Which one of these are, uh, should we move forward with in, in production? And so we asked, we were talking to boys, like six and seven year old boys, and they kept, um, they kept picking the same track set. This one started to emerge as, as their favorite. And um, so of course, it's my job as a researcher, and as somebody uh, deeply interested in fun and, and play and toys. Um, well, why? Why is this set better than the other set? So the six-year-olds simply looked at me and said, well, it's more fun. It's like, oh, okay, <laughs> it's more fun. I can't, I can't go back to the designers and say, well, you know what, your, your set didn't work because it just wasn't as much fun as the other one. So I, I, I try to ask the kids, it's like, well, I mean, what do you mean fun? And so, of course, the six-year-olds look at me as if I'm, I'm from another planet, and they're saying, what do you mean, you, what do you mean fun? Don't you know what fun is? <laughs> and and, uh, and it, it gave me a minute there, and I, I paused, and I thought, hey, wait a minute. Do I really know what fun is? Do we really know what it is? And maybe it was time for uh, a new definition of fun, or to explore it a little bit more. So, what we do, um, I, I work for a large corporation, so we get to take a lot of time, spend a lot of money, trying to figure out, well, what's fun about? And we did that, and we did uh, a really large study, and it started off with um, talking to hundreds of, of kids, boys and girls of different ages, first trying to, to ask them, well, what are the behaviors that you associate with fun? So we got this list, a huge list, it's over 100 different behaviors, and it covered everything from making a mess, having a party, um, dressing a doll, um, doing arts and crafts activities. And we had this huge list of hundreds of activities. So then we did uh, another, then we created that and made a survey and, and basically talked to thousands of kids around the country and basically had them evaluate each of those activities. Tell us how much they like each one and then compare those activities with other activities. And I think what was interesting is we started seeing clusters. Clusters emerge, and we actually saw 10 clusters emerge. And we looked at those clusters and we interpreted them. And we basically interpreted them as expressions of fun. So 10 expressions of fun. We called them expressions because these are the kinds of things we would imagine a child would say when they would encounter something fun, one or more of these. And that's what I'm going to take you through, these 10 expressions of fun. Um, so let's start with the first one. There we go. So just to let you know, this wasn't a bunch of adults just projecting on the data with I'm free. <laughs> but freedom is probably, and these are actually, these, these expressions of fun are ranked in order of importance. Sense of freedom was one of the strongest expressions of fun that we measured. So what is this? What is freedom um, for a kid? Well, basically, this is unstructured, um, voluntary activity 
with minimal constraints um, that is characterized by a strong sense of immediacy and living in the moment. Um, in other words, it's running around. Okay, the next expression of fun. Um, those of you with kids are, are probably very, or who, who watch kids play are probably very familiar with this. It's, I dream. This is about imagination. It's about pretending. It's about possibilities. It's about make-believe. It's about daydreaming. Um, and it's actually interesting. This, this expression of fun, imagine, imagination, uh, pretending, dreaming, is um, a lot of research has been done on this in, in terms of imaginative play. And there are some amazing uh, benefits that are associated with this. Um, imaginative play has been associated with improved uh, language skills, improved social skills, um, resilience. Um, one of the interesting things is it's actually been associated with um, delayed gratification or helping uh, children uh, understand patience. And, and I love that one. And I'd actually, I've got two kids, and I've got a three-year-old daughter, and I actually tried that out with her um, not too long ago. Um, it's at the dinner table, and, and she's an active three-year-old and just couldn't get her to sit down at the table, sit in her chair. Kept saying, please, Audrey, sit down. It's dinner time. Um, she wouldn't, so then I thought, oh, okay, I know this research. Um, let's use our imagination. Okay, Audrey, let's imagine we're in the... Um, fairy forest, and the fairies are sleeping, and we've got to be quiet and eat our dinner. Okay, so you know what? It's amazing, it worked. She sat down, quietly ate her dinner. Um, so about an hour later, or an hour and a half later, it's bath time, and this was a hair washing night. Okay, hair washing and three-year-olds sometimes doesn't go very well <laughs> together. So it was a hair washing night, and it's, okay, Audrey, time to go to the bath. No, Dada, no. Okay, it was the same fight. It's like, well, Audrey, why not? Why can't you just get in the bath and wash your hair? She said, well, Dada, the fairies are sleeping, and the bathtub <laughs> is their bed. Okay, so, um, so this can go a few different ways. Um, all right, next, uh, next expression of fun. This one, you... I dream, or I'm special. You, just look at the picture. I mean, this kid, what's happened here? He's won the lottery. He, his parents just told him, you know what, Jaden? You can stay up an hour and a half after your bedtime and watch another 30 minutes of SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> That's this. That is a sense of, of being lucky, um, exception, privilege. And that's fun for a kid. Um, this is also one that, that indexes and is ranked pretty high for kids. Um, I belong. This is, you know, a lot of child development is about a child's developing identity as they get older. But also a really important part of that is feeling a sense that they're part of a larger group, feeling a sense of acceptance. And for children, that's actually fun, that connection that they can make with other people. Um, it's something that we observe and when we're talking to kids and observe their play, play behavior and talk to them about play behavior. And it's actually interesting that cooperative play um, as a type of play pattern is becoming more popular with kids or seems to be becoming more important. And, and we have all sorts of ideas about this. And one, though, that we keep hearing from kids, it's especially older kids, we think it's connected to the rise of social media. Um, lots of kids are connected with other kids online um, in other ways, and they're playing together. A child would actually rather go on an adventure and explore a game world with his friends as a collaborative teamwork than on their own. Um, and it's an interesting development that we're continuing to, to, to watch. And I mean, I think you, can, you all can validate this yourselves if next time you're on, on Facebook and talking to a 30 or 40 something year old kid, and they're trying to recruit you to help them plant watermelons in Farmville, right? Um, this is, it's cooperative play, social play, a sense of belonging is very important and a very important aspect of fun. Okay, yeah. I mean, really, what can I say? Um, who doesn't like a fart joke, right? Um, 
that's, that's uh, seriously. I mean, you want to make a toy funny, make it fart, then make it burp. If you've got pets, make them poop and pee. Um, it's, uh, it's wacky. Kids are wacky. That's fun. Um, all right, another expression of fun. I know. Um, this is the type of expression that you see when kids are learning to ride a bike when they're engaged with construction toys, when they learn how to dress a doll, when they build a, a, a Hot Wheels track. Um, it's, it's when they go on a scavenger hunt. It's, gaining, um, it's seeking out knowledge. It's gaining a sense of mastery and gaining a sense of control. Um, really give a, a sense of accomplishment. And that's fun. OK. Yes, we know about active play. But there's also another thing that's fun for kids. Um, this happens to be um, my wife's favorite expression of fun. It kicks in about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, it's uh, just kicking back, relaxing, um, sitting around. Again, um, kids tell us all the time that this is a very fun thing for them to do. All right, I'm proud. Um, this is, this is a, a great expression of fun, and you see it with kids a lot. Um, if you're walking, wandering around, maybe you see um, a bunch of kids, <coughs> oftentimes boys, um, with swords just beating on each other. And you're like, ooh, gosh, that's, that's aggressive. That's, that's, that's not good. Um, but then you may talk to the boys. You may find out, well, one of the boys will tell you, I'm a hero and I'm trying to protect my fort, and he's the villain, and he's trying to, to get in. And there's an altruism or a benevolence to that type of play. And you, and you actually see that a lot with boys, and sometimes it gets misinterpreted. Um, oftentimes, you'll see a group of kids um, who have baby dolls, maybe they're girls, and they're nurturing and taking care of and, and protecting those baby dolls. That's also associated with this exp um, uh, expression of fun, a sense of pride, um, benevolence. Um, in the case of my daughter, she often has the sword fighting off her brother who's trying to disrupt the tea party with the Barbie dolls in her room. So you see it happen in a lot of different creative ways. All right, a couple more. Um, I stand out. This is about, we call this theatrical play. Um, it's it's self-expression. It's, it's saying, telling people who you are. Um, it's performing. Um, it's something that we see often with older kids, especially as that identity really starts to kick in. It's, it's creative. It's customization. It's, um, it's, it's got a sense of passion to it. Uh, this is who I am, and that's fun. And then finally, there's this one, I dare. Um, kids like to be mischievous, shenanigans. You know, it's, uh, this would probably rank higher if kids didn't get caught and didn't get in trouble. <laughs> um, but I think this is a great one because, uh, you know, after all, breaking the rules is often how innovation happens. And it can be really fun. OK, so what did we learn from all this and this exploration of, of fun and the different expressions of fun? Well, we learned that, you know what? It really isn't about the product. It wasn't about the plastic. It wasn't about the wood or the die cast. It wasn't about the features, the sounds, the lights, the actions that the toy provided. It's about the experience that it provides. And and when I think about these expressions of fun, I think it's probably possible that they could translate to other categories of products or other services that are targeted to a broader audience of kids of all ages. So with that, I will just finish off with a quote from my favorite doctor, Theodore Geisel, who said, fun is good. Thank you. <laughs>